Come on, ring those bells. Come on, ring those bells. Jesus is the one. Jesus is the one.
kick them over. But they're 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 different positions mentioned in the Bible to pray. You can pray standing up. You can praise standing up. You can praise bowed on your on your knees. So uh, there's what well, I guess what I'm trying to say is there's no wrong position. We're gonna do sweet, sweet spirit. What's up, man? Get my get my tea tar going. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place.
her children together at one time. Oh. She never could get that because somebody was mad at somebody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, all of my brothers, all of my sisters, my mama and my daddy are gone. But when I get there, she's going to have everything she ever wanted. Oh, already got it. And that's my, that's my favorite song. Thank you. Oh, what we're we singing next, Pastor Lynn? Oh, we're singing Silent Night. Song all you can sing? Yep, we're going to sing Away in the Manger, but that's all the song name. It's not up there. No. What page is it? But it's got our pictures. Page, page 77. 77. It's got our pictures. All right, go to, uh, have, you, have you got it on the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, read the instructions down there. Go to slideshow. And then start from the beginning. All right now, arrow down one. Okay, you finished. We'll give you a 95. Give me a 90. All right, page 77, Away in the Manger. Away.
Bibles to the ninth chapter of Isaiah. And we're going to be looking at the sixth verse. Also, you can flip back to the seventh chapter. And uh, we're going to go there for just a little bit. Before we get started on that, I wanted to show you something. I know some of you have just started started coming, have never seen seen this before. But uh, the ones at the Bennett Cowboy Church a while a while have. This is our our uh, our uh, mission statement and our our vision. The the the. Uh, mission statement is that we are looking for a movement of God. We're uh, we're for the advancement of the kingdom and we're and we're uh, working in and on the harvest. Now I've uh, preached on this two or three times and I think probably after the first of the year, I'm on. I'm gonna do it again, and I'll break these down. But I want to talk to you about this for just a, a second. A movement of God. So many times we make our plans. We say, God, I'm gonna do this. God, I'm I'm doing this, and I'm doing it for you. Bless me, bless me. Instead of spending time in prayer and and to see what God's doing, where is God moving, and then go jump on, on what God's doing and move in that direction. Uh, we're all about the advancement of the kingdom. I want to see Cowboy Church grow, but that's not our main, our main emphasis. Our main emphasis is to see people come to Christ and become disciples, whether they're here or if they're at some other church. So, so we're trying to advance the kingdom, and we work in and on the harvest. Now, we don't exactly understand that around here, but uh, I worked in uh, Zimbabwe for about 10 years, and they have a 12-month growing season. And they, they are, they're harvesting food and planting more seed all at the same time. We need to be doing that. We need to uh, think of our, our spiritual seed that we plant. And we need, we need to be in the harvest. We need to see people saved, coming to Christ. All right, our, our vision statement at Cowboy Church, we don't just go to church. We are the church. And when we gather together with each other or with other believers, we have church. If I run into you at Walmart, we're going to have church. Okay? <laughs> so, I'm going to leave that right there so y'all study it a bit. Okay, Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Oh, uh, I read a statement this 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 week. We're we're in the the Christmas season, and there's a lot of stuff going on. I read a statement that Charles Spurgeon, the great uh, the great preacher from the 1800s said that if there's any day out of 365 that Jesus was not born on, it was December 25th. But then he went on to say, we really don't know which day it was, so one day is as good as another. We're celebrating the birth of Christ. Uh, We need to, we need to, uh, 
I'm trying to make sure I'm not getting ahead of myself here. We need to uh, to come to a place where we concede that yes, Christmas probably began as a pagan holiday. If you have somebody tell you that, just do this away. Christmas is a secular holiday. If somebody tells you that, nod your head. All of you do this right now. Nod your head. Yeah. Christmas is a secular holiday. So it's a pagan holiday, a secular holiday, and it's a cultural holiday because in America, no other no other country or very few celebrate Christmas like we do. They all have different different customs. So it's probably a pagan holiday. Most most probably a, a secular holiday. And it's also a cultural holiday. But with all that being said, we as believers need to take advantage of it. It's the perfect time for us to share Christ. It's called Christmas. Christmas. Okay? So we need to take advantage of it. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. I thank you for these uh, folks that have turned away today to, uh, to uh, praise you, worship you, uh, to, to, to hear your word spoken. Father, we ask you right now, we, we need to hear from you. May the words of my mouth and the, and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Father, may I speak your word boldly and say the things that, that I need to say. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. If you look at Isaiah, the ninth chapter and verse number six. Did you say six? Six. Okay. Isaiah nine six. Yeah. And we're going to go back to chapter 7 at some point here today. Okay, it says, For, uh, for to us a child is born, to us a son is, is given, and the government will be on on his shoulders, and he will be called, be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Okay, we we hear that a lot. Uh, it's on Christmas cards. Uh, you see it in department stores. Uh, it's on the on the. Uh, plaques. Ann and I were at uh, Burlington. Uh, I saw a plaque in there that says, For unto us a child is born. So we can hang it up in our hands. But what does it mean? What, what, what is all of this about? First of all, we need to look at the book of Isaiah and it's a prophecy. Uh, Isaiah speaks to uh, my fingers are not working here today. Not cooperating. Uh, Isaiah speaks to three different times three different time spans in the nation of Israel. It speaks before Babylonian exile. He speaks during Babylonian exile. And he speaks after Babylonian exile. So we need to understand that 
when we read a scripture. We need to ask ourselves, well, who were they talking to and what were they talking about at that time? Uh, it was really kind of a strange thing going on. Now, we can safely assume that since this is early in the book of Isaiah, it was before the exile. Uh, the southern kingdom of Israel, Judah, uh, was 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 being was being pressured by the northern kingdom, Israel, and also the nation of Syria, to form a coalition against the nation of Assyria. And they felt pressured from all, all sides. You see, they were a little bitty country. And all these big countries was fixing to fight. And they were saying, okay, whose side are you going to be on? You know. And they were getting, they were getting pressure from, 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 from everybody. And they felt powerless. And they were afraid of everybody. You know. Because any one of them could come in and just conquer them. All right, as as their as their enemies grew in strength and tightened their hold on them, they didn't know if God was for them or if He was against them or if He just simply abandoned them. They didn't know. They didn't know at this time. Where, where they stood. As Isaiah prophesied as to what would be happening, he spoke of, of uh, two prophetic visions of a child. This uh, child would represent... represent God's presence and embody his uh, uh, characteristics and bear the responsibility of governing his people. Okay. First of all, let's flip back over to Isaiah chapter, chapter 7. And look at verses 14 through through 16. Isaiah 7, 14 through through 16. Uh, Therefore, the Lord Himself will give you a sign: the the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and will call him Emmanuel. He will eat curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. But before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid waste. So this, this, this prophecy gave them encouragement that the two nations that were trying to come against them was going to be was going to be conquered themselves and uh, it gave them it gave them assurance but they they were not they were not sure what you know was this was this child was it a person just a human that's going to come and be their their immediate savior. Uh, the Gospel of Matthew uh, uh, quotes this same this same pa passage in Matthew one verse 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 twenty three as he told the story of Jesus' birth, but. We know that the name Emmanuel means God with us. But they were they were under 
under a lot of pressure. They didn't know what was about to happen. They didn't know which way to turn. And they wanted immediate help. That sounds a lot like us, don't it? Mm -hmm. You know. It's kind of like I heard a story one time of uh, a preacher preached about about having 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 patience and a lady came to the to the altar at the close and she said, Preacher, I need patience and I need it right now. <laughs> well it don't work that way. And so many times we want relief kind of like the Jerry Clower story when he climbed a tree and got hold to a bobcat and he said just shoot up here amongst us one of us needs some needs some relief how many times do we feel that way you know just you know I don't care I don't care what happens I just need relief all right for to us a child is is born Isaiah 9 6 speaks speaks of a child also both of these verses describe Jesus birth and his and his and his character the government will be on his shoulders means he will bear the responsibility of governing the 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 the, the people verse number verse number 7 tells us that he will do this for forever of the greatness of his of his government and peace there will be no end he will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. All right, two of the titles that they used here, a uh, wonderful counselor and uh, prince of peace, could be a person, you know? It could be a king or a ruler or a president. You could have somebody that's really, really smart, like Solomon. And uh, they could be a wonderful counselor. You remember Solomon was a judge, and he had a lot of wisdom. Uh, Israel also saw a peaceful time under him. But they, as they heard this, they probably put more emphasis on that part than they did the, the other two because they desperately needed wisdom and they desperately wanted peace because they said, we're going to lose, you know. Whatever happens, we're going to lose. So these would have been traits that they greatly desired in a leader. But the other two, mighty God and everlasting Father, are names that can only apply to God. The Israelites were not expecting God to be born and live among them. They had no concept of incarnation, and the names and titles were just symbolic to them. They were, they were thinking that a leader was going to rise up and he was going to be such a great leader that he was going to be a symbol of, of God and a symbol of the everlasting Father. Uh, they, couldn't, they couldn't see it from, 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 from their point of view. It's really, it's really easy for us today as we look back on history and we read Isaiah 7, 14 and Isaiah 9, 6 and we say a name like 
Emmanuel, God with us, is clearly referring to the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And the empires Israel were afraid of were defeated before Jesus, Jesus' time. So titles like Mighty God and Everlasting Father could only apply to a child who was also divine like Jesus. But again, the Judeans believed that they were in immediate need of a physical Savior. The kings were afraid that the, the kings that they were afraid of were literally knocking on their door. Uh, uh, used to have a lady that uh, that uh, that worked for me, and she would she didn't intend to, but she just said she just said she just said. Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, funny, funny things sometimes. And she, 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 she tell me now, Lynn. You know that hindsight's always fifty-fifty. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I understand. So remember that hindsight's always fifty-fifty. All right. The word became flesh. In the Gospel of uh, John, we read about the, full the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. The child who bore these, these qualities was born centuries later, not even a single generation later. And he was not merely human, but the incarnation of a living God. We talked last, last week about who Jesus is. We need, to, we need to understand. He was a man just like Bobby Schofield, except he never sinned. But at the same time, he was God himself. You know, our, our minds can't even, can't even comprehend that. He's God's son, and he was Mary's son, so he was 100% human. He's God's son, but yet he's God himself. We cannot take his deity away from him without, we just do away with everything he taught if you take that out of, uh, out of the arm. Uh, a um, 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 picture. In, in John it says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1.14 in the Gospel of Luke, the angel Gabriel directly alludes to this famous prophecy when he tells Mary about Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Luke 1, 32 and 33. The only king who could reign forever is one who would live forever. And the only one who could rightfully hold God's title was God himself. Israel was looking for immediate remedy for their physical and political problems. God's solution wouldn't come for, for centuries, 
but it will last forever. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that. Jesus reigns to this day. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 In this, in this Christmas season, as I said earlier, we need to concede that Christmas is cultural, secular, and most probably pagan. But it is a great family holiday. It's a great time for everybody to get together. And it's a great opportunity for us as believers to share Jesus with unbelievers. Jesus reigns to this day. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for the, the, the prophecies of, of Isaiah. We're thankful for a Jesus that lives for, 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 forever and, and ever. That he sits at your right hand right now. That he searches our heart. That each each prayer that we pray, that he interprets that, and he he tells you what he found in our hearts, not necessarily the words that we say, but what our what our heartfelt intentions are. Father, we just we just thank you so much for 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 who Jesus is and for what he's. He's doing in our lives today. And we just give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to be talking more about the birth of Christ next week.